hi everybody and welcome Raphael from Poland. Embarking on a mission to represent his nation in Eurovision 2021, Rotterdam. Welcome to ESC Extra. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Uh, hi, I'm very fine. Thank you. Finally, you know, we have a spring and we're waiting for the summer. So um, I'm in good condition. I think so. Uh, but uh, how about you? <laughs> you feel okay? Yeah, all good here. Thank you very much. Excited that spring is here. And as they say, the month of May is just around the corner. So everything's starting to feel kind of real that Eurovision's happening and Eurovision's coming. Um, yeah. So it's exciting to speak with you today. Um, it's 31 days, I think, until your semi final. How does that, like, does that make you nervous? Does it make you excited? You know, uh, yes, of course, I feel uh, excitement. I'm a little bit stressy about it because, you know, uh, finally I have information that we are going to Rotterdam because uh, before that we don't have uh, any clue that we, we, if, we, if we go there or just we are, you know, uh, waiting for the live to tape. Uh, yeah. our show and then, so it's different if you're not feeling this in your mind that you are going to sing in Rotterdam and being on the stage with those artists. So, so do you have a plan, like what day you'll arrive? So, uh, yeah, we are going at 8th of May, 8th of May. So uh, we are going with the dancers, with the choreograph and the director and uh, a few guys from, the, from people, people from the national TV and uh, management. So we, got, we have like 10 or 12 people with a crew. And we were ready for the party, you know, to meet uh, all those great uh, journalists, uh, you guys, and of course, a lot of artists. So you've done the live on tape performance. Yes. And we saw a few days ago your performance of the ride um, on The Voice Kids. <laughs> um, yeah. So does that give us an indication of like what that no? Uh no, no, that's that's really a um, funny story with that. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to do that exactly. I think maybe uh, my my look should be the same, probably the same. But I'm I'm thinking about uh, another feeling. I'm a little bit with the choreography with the uh, dancers, and we are moving on the stage from right to left, and we are going farther. And of course, I'm waiting for the moment to take off my sunglasses and say hello to Europe. You know, it's really important to that, and <laughs> that's why I'm I'm waiting for for those moments. We don't want we don't want to have. Uh, I know that everyone wants to see our performance right now. So if if we do that in the uh, uh, voice kids, they say, "Oh, this is the same. The same. You prepared that for for the Eurovision." And we say, "No, no, no. We have something different and a little bit, you know, um, uh, different, but." But I think um, we'll be okay with that. Cool. So, yeah, it's good to keep something kind of secret and up your sleeve to surprise people a bit when you get there for the real thing. Of course. Yeah. And, of course, you're not, you wouldn't be allowed that many dancers on stage in Eurovision. So are you taking the guys? Are you taking the girls? Have you got... Yeah, um, I can uh, tell you exactly what's going on. On the stage, in the re regulations, you have only six, six person with the artists, uh, so included. Yeah. So... I think four dancers and uh, one background vocals and, and me, of course. But we uh, figure out about, you know, uh, given a chance to multiply, multi multiply uh, the, the dancers on this. So, you know, we, we don't need so, massive LED screens, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. we, we yeah. want to have them more on the screen and to have more dancers from the video clip together. So I think it's, 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 it's a good idea to do that. It feels a million years ago that Eurovision happened the last time, but it was two. And you were involved because you were on the Polish jury, so which means that we know everything about you because I have to publish all the results. Um, and in 2019, you chose Australia um, with Kate Miller-Heidke's Gravity as your number one. And it got the 12 points from the Polish jury overall. What was it for you that made that like the best song and a standout performance? Uh, I say, all right, uh, my points go to Australia because of the great performance, because of the uh, 
uh, technically for me was hard to sing when you are in the air. You know, she was she was in the air in the sky, something like that, and singing in a classical style with the you know full voice. For me, it was really uh, hard uh, to sing very well, uh, like technically. And the idea of the of the show was really something uh, new for me, and I like it. I love it. And the technically it was very hard to sing this song. You have yeah. to like some serious fitness and core strength to be able to hold yourself and sing like yeah. that when you're. <laughs> flying around well, well, and i'm uh, i'm also a performer so i know how to hard is to sing and dance and to sing uh when you are laid down on the on the floor i i've seen uh, many uh, shows with and, and celine dion expl explained to the people how it's hard to sing when you are laying down on the floor mm. with the with the muscles so if you are in the air and you sing that, it's really hard. So for me, it was great performance, and I like I like this this show, this this state of mind, and this this effect with the, the thinking that we do that in this direction. So as well as your sort of musical and artistic prowess, you also come from a sports background. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you're used you're used to competition. Um, what do you consider to be a win? at Eurovision? Is it about the trophy and the gold medal or is it about the participation and giving like an honest performance of your entry? So the, the last sentence that you just uh, the, tell me the, uh, right now, it's uh, it's about Baron de Pierre de Coubertin. So it was the uh, idea of Olympic Games. Yeah. It's, not, it's not important to win, it's important to participate. Uh, so I'd like to be a very happy man on a stage to be a part of this uh, European uh, community with the song. But, you know, if you are a sportsman and you go further, you say, all right, so why not? Maybe, you know, uh, it's uh, from one place to another is better. Of course, it's good if you are going for the competition and you... Are uh, you, you are on a good position after that? But I think for me, it's uh, uh, my dream is come true right now to be a participant and and to stay on the stage. And in in a year like this, or 2021 so far, there's not many artists that have the opportunity to perform in a big arena on a massive stage. That's been such a rare thing recently that I guess it must feel quite a bit of a a privilege in a way to have. That you're saying you know we're going. Um, that, that, yes, that's something really special for the Eurovision artists. Yes, of course, you, you get absolutely right. With this pandemic situation, it's hard for everyone, not only for the artists and for the musician, but all the crews, you know, technical staff, people from Lightning and, and uh, the sound engineers and the crews, the technical staff, they don't have a work, so uh, we don't perform. Uh, it's, it's really, really hard. Uh, if you work in TV like uh, I am, uh, like I am, uh, you have a lot of work still. But if not, there are no concerts. So I think we are hungry, you know, mm. hungry for the performance. And I guess you kind of have an advantage on some of the artists that you're not just a music artist and a stage performer, but you also have like ten years experience and a lot of you know dancing, presenting, singing on TV. So Eurovision is very much a TV show as well as a song competition. So I guess that to you is like second nature, being in the TV environment. And some of your competition won't be used to TV quite so much. They're more sort of live stage performers or studio performers. Do you think it will help you that you're sort of so natural to a TV world? Oh, yeah, that's that's true that if you have a lot of experience with the camera, it's easier that you, that you just know what, how, how it's going on, how, how to do that. And you know about the uh, uh, the the cue cameraman. The, it's 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 a, some some kind of program that they are programming each part of a realization. Uh, so you need you need to remember if the camera is going on the left side, it will be the same seconds every time. So you need yep. to remember that what's going on each seconds of your show. And I think it's better for me, but. I, I think hosting is something different because if you are a host mm. uh, or you work at the TV, um, you, um, you need to create just uh, emotions, but you have a text. You need to yeah. um, uh, focus on that, on that. You need to, uh, you need to, be, you need to be uh, uh, prepare, you need to prepare for 
any ex, ex, uh, uh, unexpected uh, situation. You know what I mean. But if you are on a stage and if you sing, if you sing, you are a singer. You are a creator of the reality because it's something new and it, it, it it's something incredible that um, something new has happened. And uh, the music is the most powerful thing. Lots of Eurovision fans will have become familiar um, with, with you and your face uh, initially from Junior Eurovision in 2020, hosting it in Poland. Did you at that time think, I am going to be submitting an entry or I hope to submit an entry for the main Eurovision contest in 2021? Or was it not something you were thinking back in November and it developed since? Where did that come in? Uh, oh, yeah. So, it's a funny story with that because I've met uh, Martin, Martin Osterdal from EBU, the, the, the chief of EBU, and also was one of, one of the, his friends was Gerd Karg from EBU. And we were, we were talking about a lot of things. And they asked me, and you are a performer also. You are a singer. I said, yeah, I'm, I am a singer also. So why are you not going to the main event? I say, no, I didn't expect that, you know, but you never have, you never know. And uh, the, because the process of this song was so fast and so mm. uh, it, it should it goes in different way and I, we were just you know laughing and and have a jokes with that well it will be really great if you go as a host to the main event so let's meet in the Rotterdam I said no no it's impossible so it was a funny story with that and so, uh, suddenly something happened that they choose my song and they want me to go uh, with mm -hmm. the, the ride so uh, as I told you, it was uh, uh, the, um, the reason for that it was uh, my album for the autumn this year for my 10th uh, solo career anniversary. Because in this year, I have 10 solo career anniversary. I started in The, Vo uh, the Voice of Poland uh, in 2011, solo career. So it was like uh, uh, I, ha I wanted to have an album with the, all the, my ideas and inspiration. So I know that right now uh, songs from Dua Lipa or The Weeknd are very popular in, the, in uh, all over the world because I'm listening a lot of music right now to what, what is new and is brand and it's really fresh. And I wanted to do that. And I, and I knew that uh, the retro style, this 80s is sounds mm. are really great. And I love it because I'm from 80s. So I'm like <laughs> an old man, you know right now so, so <laughs> if you now uh, are at, uh, if you are uh, speaking with your audience and uh, they are young and they know, don't know what happened in 80s so you know it's really, really <laughs> crazy and i have a lot of experience with that i remember all those things in poland there was different times mm -hmm. and all those neons uh, they were very brand new and fresh but it was old and classic if you look at this right now you say okay this is the classic style so everything happened very fast. And now uh, I'm sure in Rotterdam, when I meet Martin Osterdahl, we will uh, have a <laughs> lot of fun with this, you know, say, I told you that. I yeah. said, no, it's impossible. How you do that? You are Santa Claus or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny how things turn out. But yeah, here we are. We spoke to our friends at ESC Norga for an interview not too long ago. And it sounded like um, the TV station, TVP, were thinking there would be lots of ballads and kind of calm, reflective songs in 2021. So something that was high energy and up-tempo would that's be a really good idea and a, and a good contrast, which is what you've got. And the ride obviously really fit that style of song very well. But now we see sort of the full list of all the songs going to Rotterdam. There's quite a lot of pop songs, upbeat, high-tempo, energetic songs. So how do you feel about that? competition you know so uh of course when when was the first uh, the, those regulations that they want to have an energetic song they thought about they don't want to have a ballad for yeah. sure it was it was uh, the for sure idea like that, that we want to have an energetic song a uh, modern song uh a song which is uh which uh, can be a popular in Polish radio stations and of course can be a good uh, hit in the Eurovision stage. So they choose the right. But in that period of time, it was a lot of ballads, especially in mm -hmm. my, um, you know, uh, I know, the basket of the of the all the artists. So my part yes. of the artists in this. So it's a lot of ballads. 
But right now I'm, I'm uh, listening to all the songs and they are also energetic and powerful. So you don't know what is going on on the stage because the Eurovision Song Contest is unexpected, unexpected. One year you can be sure that this song should win this competition, but it's not. So uh, you'd never know. It's, it's, uh, it's about the feeling, about the, the people they, they like the song, the, the artist or the performing on the stage. So everything depends on that. Mm. And uh, I'm feeling okay with this. I'm really happy that I have an energetic song that would be a lot of fun and uh, that we can move on the stage, dance and, and sing that. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just feeling okay with this, that it, we, we took a disadvantage with this song and, and that, they uh, they changed the song for the energetic song, not for the ballad. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's all I can say. Uh, I'm really happy to see all this performing. Um, I have my favorite songs also, like Switzerland. It's a ballad, yeah. but you know I think the guy is singing amazing. Yeah. And if he, if he sings uh, the same live on the stage, I'll be <laughs> whoa, really happy about you. You're the man here. I can't sing with the falsets like that. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. <laughs> no. Any any other favorites as well as Switzerland? Yeah, I I can say that the San Marino and San Hit because I met her and it was really fun, really great. She's great and I she's love great her. She's great fun. She's crazy, she's she's great. Amazing. Yeah, like uh, on the stage performing and uh, her 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 look and her hairstyle on the stage. She's really really completed. So I think so. The French people also, the French song is good, really. Um, so they are my three favorites right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it sounds like a lot of the public agree with you that those songs are kind of up there with the with the betting and with sort of the fan yeah. polls and stuff. But like let's you say, with, any, let's go with the people. Let's, let's go with the people. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so anything can happen. How things turn out on stage. It's really unpredictable. You never know what will actually happen with the results because Eurovision, sometimes it's... As I told you, as I told you, the same. That uh, So just, just just be yourself and, and you, need to, you need to sing and be yourself and that's it. That's, that's the most important. For sure. Well, it's really exciting that it's not that many days until you'll be able to get to Rotterdam and start your sort of preparations in real life for the ride um, in, in the actual venue. Um, so good luck with all the preparations before your departure. And fingers crossed to you, Raphael, for your performance of The Ride in semi-final two of Eurovision 2021. Um, just before we say goodbye, any message for all the fans out there um, watching this on the SE Extra? Yeah, of course. It was a pleasure to meet you and to talk with you. Thank you for this opportunity that we have a chance to to say not only hello and what is about the ride and just about the life, uh, so uh, many greetings and many hugs from Poland and uh, thank you for all the supporting my country and my songs the right and uh, uh, please have a nice uh, uh, expect a nice time with all the artists on the Eurovision song uh, contest because it's a great uh, uh, main event and uh, this, we, we want to celebrate this great event together with all the artists because we need that and uh, so please guys be with us and um, make all the supports and hugs and uh, uh, have a nice music and let's go with the ride of my life of course <laughs> thank you so much awesome thank you so much Rafael, and best of luck thank you thank you thank you and many hugs from poland bye, bye, -bye.